As Norma Plummer, hoping for the best. Here we go. New Zealand to start the match in possession. And Wilson looking for Van Dyke. But going to Tataya. It's Maggie Duplessis from South Africa and Chris Campbell from the Caribbean looking after this match. And it's a big occasion for them as well. McMahon, Shin, and Cox. And a contact early against Temapara George. I imagine there'll be plenty of those across the match. De Bruyne trying to defend the shot from Cox, but it's good. Fantastic effort by Cox there. You always frustrated one of the first shots. So well done to Catherine Cox. What kind of pressure can be mounted in the midcourt? And that goes to Monia Girard. 1-0 Girard, who of course injured her knee when, they t when the teams met in Sydney last year. And of course Liz Ellis in Auckland. So uh, there's a bit of history there for Australia's serious injuries in recent matches. Neither Gerard nor Ellis played in the Commonwealth Games. Great strong work from Cox. She's got to make sure she stands upright on the lean. De Bruyne gets the important rebound. Contact uh, across in the middle of the court against uh, Nat Bomberto, Temapara George to take it. The pace of the game is frantic, so what Australia need to do is when they get it, control the pace, control it, play at their own speed, don't play the fast speed of New Zealand. A smile from uh, Ruth Aiken as Tataya puts through a long bomb. We can expect to see those. That's how she's been playing their National League. Cox. Not quite confident over the shot yet, but to all. Great take in the air from Cox, and she steadies and shoots. Van Dyke doing quite a bit of work outside the circle early, Ella. She certainly is. She's trying to get the movement going, and obviously Tatai has been shooting well. Shot the third, last couple of goals for them. There's that great split from Van Dyke. Well, the split actually takes up half the actual circle, so that's why she shoots relatively close all the time and has such high percentages. 72 tests Irene played for South Africa. She is the most capped player in world netball as Gerard bounces it to Von Berto. McMahon across to Shin. Great drive into the circle from McMahon, but it comes to Cox. Great quick hands by Australia. They're moving the ball around. Darby then being caught for contact, but pushing back onto McMahon. And McMahon gets her first shot. What Australia really need to do is keep with New Zealand. We obviously know they are a phenomenal, phenomenal side at this point. You've got to stick with them because when the pressure's on them, they don't like it. Player goes down. It was uh, Gerard. She's quickly back to her feet. The ball finds its way into Van Dyke. And Ellis contact. <laughs> and Irene Van Dyke stole about a metre. <laughs> As you do, apparently. Well, you try to anyway. You try to get away with it. <laughs> Centre pass pressure for both teams will be vital across the match. McMahon has almost a short pass. She ended up right beside Cox. What McMahon there is doing is taking a step back to shoot the goal on one foot. She wants to give herself more room. So New Zealand pressure over the shot is phenomenal. They've got long arms, they're tall girls. Give yourself a bit more room. Shin nearly got a look at that one that found Langman eventually. Wilson. Destruction against Gerard. Back from here. Wilson finds to tire. She shuffles in another step or two. And that bounces off the post. Chatfield. Bomberto to Gerard. And the Australians have to treasure these turnovers. There may not be many of them. McMahon. Bomberto to the pocket, but pulling it out of the air is Davu. She's so tall. He's as tall as Van Dyke. Beautiful set up there by New Zealand defence. They forced it wide, and Davu read it beautifully to come out for that intercept. Farmer's obstructing. To tire. Ellis trying to defend from behind. No call from umpire Chris Campbell. At this level, a lot is left up to the umpires to call it, but they often don't. They let it play on. It's tough stuff. Cox, top of the circle. Shin. And it's bounced in. Smart feed to Cathcock. Right. She shot her and shoots it quickly. Don't let uh, Billy Dabu get set. Well, you know, if you put the ball up high, of course that's what they love. So get it down. 
Contact call is against the Dean Wilson. Forcing, forcing it into the hands. They said that Gerard had her hands there first. Gerard feeds it on to Von Berto. Cox to the corner for Shin. Contact centre penalty. Another one against a Timapara George. Both defenders, you're obstructing both out of play. And the both oh, defenders are out of play. Maggie, Maggie Duplessis. Is Great call, yeah. Maggie Duplessis. <laughs> you like that one. I like Maggie. Oh, she's fair and she will call it as she sees it. And that's all you want from an umpire. Australia 6-5 and with the centre pass. Pretty solid beginning by the Australians. Bomberto. Cox. Corner ball. Well taken. Contact, goal attack. Contact against Jerome McMahon. What they saw was the last minute of that clash and McMahon coming in, not pulling out of a contact she probably could have put out, pulled out of. George. De Bruyne. To tire. Langman, oh, just Brian about a replay, just a fumble as much as anything. George. Is up, sir, Chatfield, oh, did well. But Brian. Gerard gives up yep. the contact. Good call by Campbell. To tie up. You better watch your footwork. That was very nearly a hop. It was. It was up and down on one foot. So I'm un unlucky there to the Australians. But George I think, is complaining about the ball now to the umpire. So we may need to get a replacement. Well, the game hasn't gone flat, that's for sure. It's a cracking start. Nothing in there, she says. <laughs> George. Wonderful start to the match. Six apiece. McMahon <laughs> trying to keep the brain on her feet. So good sportsmanship there. It was pretty, pretty much unlucky there by, by Irene Van Dyke because Liz didn't clearly have two hands, but I think... Irene they pulled her, it oh, was, in a subsequent. pulled down at the end. McMahon, Gerard, McMahon driving towards a circle, not there yet. Oh, good luck with that, Cox oh, kept it in. Fantastic effort by Cox, desperate stuff. This time it goes out, a little desperate around the circle, Australia, as Davu and De Bruyne settle into the match. We've got uh, great height there, De Bruyne at 190, Davu at 190. 18 centimetres in combined <laughs> height advantage over the Australians. They are tall. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> New Zealand back with that one goal advantage. Halfway through the first quarter. Cox. Goal attack, contact again. McMahon gives up a second. What the New Zealand defenders are trying to do is actually force the attackers wide. They're trying to get our wings, the wing attack and centre, to go wide so they can make it so tough and everything's got to go over arms. And they're coming out and reading that. So that's something they've got to go short, sharp, driving through the middle. Ellis, now she's well out of the circle. Racing back in now. But uh, there's Tatia in handy position for a two-goal lead. To this point, the body control's been pretty good, Ella. They've pulled out of challenges that could have been dangerous. Well, they have, and that's, you know, one thing you like to see. And for the umpire then, they go, oh, no, they're fairly clean, so then you can go in harder the next quarter. <laughs> OK. To tire. You've got to set it up well. <laughs> Wilson, to tire. To tire's shot very well. She's very accurate, and, you know, there's fluency in that goal-shooting motion. Gerard. Great driving. See, the gives and goes, that's what kills New Zealand. Chin. Over the top of Bomberto. That's a poor pass from Shin. Again, they're trying to make them go wide, girls. We've got to cut through the middle. They know that. Short, sharp. Australia had a 6-5 lead, but uh, the last four goals to the Kiwis. Ball goes to New Zealand. De Bruyne. Between Whit, Billy Davu, Irene Van Dyke, and Liana De Bruyne, they have 160 caps playing for other countries. <laughs> I don't know if I should make a comment about that. Well, they have the United Nations of netball, uh, New Zealand. <laughs> Two former South Africans and a former Fijian. They are, of course, they've come to New Zealand for personal reasons, though, Steve, huh? from all reports. 
good recruiting. Yes. Gerard, McMahon. Oh, did well to hold on to that. Great Roberto. take. That's what they need to do on George because she's tenacious and goes for everything and you've got to fight for it. Well, that was a very aggressive take from Bomberto and didn't they need it as McMahon gets through a much needed goal. George to tire Wilson very quickly to Van Dyke. Yes. And the Aussies shooting at not quite the perfect New Zealand rate. Oh, McMahon just so much pressure over every pass. Shin. Cox. Oh, great drive by McMahon. Took the brain wide and cut in and really strong take. Great shot. New Zealand by two. 4.20 left in the first quarter. Out comes Liz Ellis again and clatters into the tyre. <laughs> she wasn't happy. She slapped the legs. Well, she thought she had it first. And you? Well, I thought she did. <laughs> <laughs> Wilson. Shocking ring. Both out. Both of both you. Yep. Oh, Monia Gerard points at Wilson's oh, feet to say, oh, I was three feet. Uh, I don't think so. Tataya works away along the baseline. Good position. Ellis holds back and Tataya drains it. And she is seven from seven. We heard she was good and she is. <laughs> so far, she's brilliant. Uh, that's a causing call against uh, Billy Darby. Didn't give McMahon room to land. I'm going to advance the goal. You can't play. You're on a play right there. Penalty Very stern warning there that you can't be in play. You can't, you know, coach the other defender and tell them what to do. You've got to be out of play and zip it up. And zip it. Wilson. To tie Just 19 years of age. What a prospect uh, for the Silver Ferns. In fact, she has already arrived. Gerard. Right hands, Gerard. Got the tip to Ellis. Well, last important turnover. They didn't look after it, nor have they this time. And Billy Darbu again. That was shit again. She threw that one away. She will be disappointed with that. Sucking. Wing. Wing defense. Deliberate. Okay. Yep. Contact. Goal defense. Yes. Van Dyke. Doesn't miss from there. She's fairly accurate from that range. Just missed the one. They've only missed one for the quarter, New Zealand. And a hot call against McMahon. I'd have to see that, but, you know, she lifted her, her heel off, but I'm not sure if it was a step. I'll shoot her penalty pass. Langman. Wilson. Starting. Deliberate. Avance, come. Monia Gerard's going to have to back it off a little bit because she's getting advanced here. So great hands, but we've got to make sure we don't get them advanced. All the fans. Yes, yes. George. Now a good lead for New Zealand. Four goals. Wilson to tire. Contact against Chatfield. And they're starting to put the foot to the floor in New Zealand five goal lead remember they were six all in fact Australia was up six five Langman to Brain a run of three for the Silver Ferns and with possession Chatfield nearly unfortunate there by Chatfield because she sat back waiting like going hunting for it came out and just got the deflection unfortunate not to get the intercept to tire Yep. Obstruction against Bomberto. To tire. And the Australians crash into Van Dyke. She had the position. She yes. had the ball. Yes. It's crucial they try and get those rebounds. They don't miss uh, a lot of attempts, New Zealand. So when they do, you've got to capture that. Not set. Free pass. Big difference in... Uh, in the penalties now, with Australia giving up 27 to 17. Well, Australia want to be physical. What they want to do is try and have presence, and that's why the penalty count is probably a lot higher, particularly with our defenders going in really hard. McMahon. Great vision by Von Berto there to see McMahon coming past her. 
the speed. The speed of Australia can win this match, but they've got to continuously do it. Van Dyke again with that great split and the finish. Last few seconds, first quarter. New Zealand by five. And Nat Bomberto holds on to it. And it's New Zealand holding on to a very nice lead. Thank you. They won the Prince Australia to start in possession of the second quarter. And it's uh, interesting to see Laura Bomberto get her first touch and give it straight to Billy Darbu. That's what she's got to counter. The timing, the height, the athleticism. Yep. And yep. certainly when you first your first match, there'll be a lot of nerves for her to get out here. And generally, if you bring a new player on, it's a couple of turnovers. So she's got one out of the way. Let's get into it, Laura, because she's well deserving this opportunity. This will be New Zealand possession. This first cap for Laura Von Berto. At 25 years of age. Sister Natalie playing her 15th. Van Dyke. Ellis, just uh, after the challenge, backed into Van Dyke. George. That, uh, attack, goal, attack, goal, attack. There's a contact against the tyres. Yeah, I thought that was going against Chatfield, and so did she. <laughs> well, the anchor at Chatfield was nearly putting herself out of play, so they had to say no, other way. So that's what the umpires called. Chatfield. Gerard. Oh, well read by Adine Wilson. The bounce pass of Gerard picked up by the Kiwi captain. And they do, they put a zone on and they're floating into space. Well done, Ellis. Gets one back. Now you heard Norma Plummer in the break. Short, sharp. We've got to work it through. Cut them open. McMahon, Laura Von Berto, make sure of this one to Cox. Nat Von Berto. Into the circle for Kath Cox, and there we go. First goal of the second quarter for Australia. Took some getting, almost two minutes of play. Let's see if there's some combination here between the Bombertos. Oh, good, <laughs> good change of direction from Laura. Oh, that was a really tough knock, and McMahon's on the floor. I think she needs a moment. Well, as you say, what are you going to do about that, Chris Campbell? Well, certainly what McMahon was asking was, could Darvu have pulled out? And probably she could have. So that was a dangerous one. And Darvu wants a timeout. And maybe that uh, collision with McMahon did uh, take something from her. So this is how it happened. How was the timing on the challenge from Darvu? Well, the ball's gone up in the air to McMahon, and Darvu's come out from behind and taken McMahon out was called for the contact. McMahon was asking the question, could she have pulled out? And I believe she would because she was behind her. Uh, Norma Plummer continues to lay down the law. Well, it's what Australia have got to do is they've got to do the discipline stuff. They know they can't put those high balls up. It's just eaten away for dinner by the Kiwis. So what we've got to do, short, sharp, get the speed on the ball, but you've got to have patience as well with it. You've got to know that you're connecting with someone. Well, the trouble is they're picking off the bounce passes too, so uh, every, in the, off the floor, in the air, they're well, grabbing them. Well, certainly you've just got to come forward, drive strongly to the ball, get in front of your opposition. Don't go behind calling for a bounce pass. It's easy for me to sit here and say that though, Steve. I've been out there, and it's one heck of a game. Davu is OK. Langman. George on to Wilson. No trouble finding Tatia. Good hands, quite a bit of pressure. That's what we need. Got to be three feet pressure all the time. There's another turnover Australia's managed to squeeze out. They're trailing by the five, so they need a couple of these and they need to convert them. Matt Bomberto got some space. Cox and McMahon putting the Dodgers on. Garbu better be careful with that kind of, uh, well, disagreement with the decision, if you like. Almost contempt for Chris Campbell's call. Chatfield pinged on the transverse line as Langman comes up to take it. She's got to get in now. She's got to put the pressure on the shot. And Tataya, 9 from 11. 
Oh, tough take by McMahon. Just George, leaves it behind, George doesn't it? George was right there. <laughs> Chatfield onto Nat Bomberto. Oh, how good is Davu? She might be a villain, but she's also very good. When she's good, she's very, very good. And when she's bad, she's wicked. But <laughs> Van Dyke. Well, that play from New Zealand was certainly set up by Davu, who read it well, got under Cox, so she couldn't go up for that take. Wilson. Straight in throw in. Down by six. New Zealand have scored the last two. Nat Bomberto. Chatfield. Gerard Cox. And a step call. They're getting a little frustrated, Australia. They're not being able to find someone to connect to. Up the court it comes to Brown to take it. That's a classic route to Irene Van Dyke and the usual finish. Nat Bomberto gives the signal. Distracting wing, watch her arm, guard. And a warning to Langman to watch the arms. <laughs> this is a, a little less tidy in the second quarter. Cox, good Better take. drive from Cox there, right strong on the baseline. <laughs> And out of frustration, she puts an arm across the shoulder of De Bruyne after the miss. Cannot miss those. Cox, six from eight. McMahon, seven from seven. But 15 attempts to 23. It was a great intercept there. Tip from Chatfield, backed up by Ellis. Oh, dear. What was that? And certainly here, Ellis gets a tip, backed up by Chatfield. Great pressure from Australia. I call that a short pass when it's a tip. Nah, not when it's tipped because she didn't have yeah. possession and Fair enough. of the ball. To tire. There she goes. Well, that's the difference. They crush Australia when they get a turnover. They score. Breaking ball defense. To tire. Wilson. Yeah, it's not the distance, uh, Monia, it's the contact on the ball. George. Good positioning by Chatfield. She was right on the hammer of Tataya and forced her to push her hip into her. Chatfield, McMahon. Two back on Catherine Cox. Nat Von Berto. De Bruyne. Call for the contact. Yep. Cox backs herself there. That's still a lead of seven. McMahon. And bad luck for De Bruyne. She went up for it boldly. All 190 centimetres of it. Oh, dear. Bit of confusion there. There's a few turnovers coming out of the attack end. Van Dijk. Oh. That's not her range. No, it's not. Very long shot, great shooting by Irene Van Dyke, and, and she's a having a giggle. Too. Breaking ball defence. Step, free pass. And oh, she was just trying to get set for the. She, she wa wasn't taking it at all. Anyway, she called it as advantage, and then it, she thought it was actually bring it forward and set, and unfortunately, it wasn't. Oh, well, misunderstanding, in that. The cacophony that is the Brisbane Entertainment Centre. Not easy for the players to hear, but uh, everyone can see what the scoreboard says. 23 to 14. Halfway through the second quarter. Well, I'm presuming this is a strategic timeout by McMahon. She needs to get a group together. Natalie Bomberto has thrown a couple of balls away in the last probably five minutes, and I'm sure Plummer is either going to look to a change, maybe even in the goal circle she might look to do something, because it was getting bogged down. A couple of turnovers against uh, Cox. Half a dozen against uh, Sherelle McMahon under great pressure. 14 in total. But uh, Kiwis have also had their share of turnovers. The same, in fact. But uh, maybe we're going to see Susan Prattley on the court. She played uh, most of the last quarter, I think, in uh, the Commonwealth Games final, just for a couple of goals. And if uh, Susan comes on now, it would just be her eighth international. 
One thing she has done well is this year is stood up in National League. So she has been quite consistent there. So hopefully she can put that out on the court for Australia. Nolene Dix, uh, president of Netball Australia. New <laughs> Kiwi fans. And the change for Australia. McMahon going back to goal shooter and Prattley on a goal attack. So Prattley immediately finding out how hard it is to find a player. So as you have alluded to, Eloise, new players give up turnovers and there's one straight away. They generally do. You don't find very often that they can fit straight into the transition of coming off the bench. Van Dyke. Lizzie Ellis trying to have a big jump at that shot. Called for the contact on the arm. Well, if you're an Australian fan, you can't uh, like the way this is looking. Alison Broadbent, a former Australian player and Sydney Swift's defender. New Zealand uh, beat Australia by 25 goals last year in Auckland. That was their biggest ever win as Ellis puts a claw up and creates the turnover. Gerard. Well, they get the turnovers, Australia. They've just got to capitalise them. That's what they've got to do. Chatfield, Laura to Nat von Berta. Prattley, that was better work up the court. Fun is obstructing, fantastic. Prattley. <laughs> Puts up a good first shot. Great to get your first shot. As I said earlier in the match, great to get your first shot in. It calms you down. You're into the match. Australia giving up some height with the removal of uh, Kath Cox, but Prattley is a very steady goaler. Gives up another intercept. Again, if the girls on the attackers go wide, force it into the New Zealand's hands. New Zealand by 10. George. To tire, bounces one into Van Dyke. Contact against Ellis. Tire on 12 from 14, Van Dijk 14 from 15. Vaughn is obstructing, Vaughn is obstructing, Vaughn is contact. Finding this is a whole new level, Prattley was available and Cox, uh, McMahon just couldn't get it to her. A short, Darby stands aground after the disputed ball. And De Bruyne, I think she's come on like uh, Van Dyke did when she came to New Zealand. Obviously a better player than when uh, she left uh, South Africa. Well, certainly all the training and playing with such gifted athletes, obviously, you know, you learn a lot from that. Mm, simultaneous whistles there, and eventually it uh, goes Australia's way. Down by 12. They've been outscored 11-4 in this second quarter. They're just forcing it down the court. They're putting those bounce passes in where they don't need to go. Balk the ball, pop it into the, the space or where the person is driving. Brian is obstructing. Oh, Chat. good touch from Chatfield. Came over nicely. She knew Wilson was shorter than hers, so she could get an arm at it. Yeah. Yeah. Wilson with the restart. Formerly a Dean Harper. Married, of course, to a high-profile New Zealand uh, cricketer and rugby player, Jeff. Take it back. Yeah. Goalkeeper contact penalty for shot. Ten penalties against okay. Gerard and Ellis. Advantage obstruction, advantage contact. To tire. Ellis the challenge to tire the accurate shot. Good centre pass there by Nat and Laura von Berto, taking it where they wanted to, but then throw it away. De Bruyne is having a whale of a game. Five yes. intercepts against Davu. And uh, just the one for De Bruyne. But, uh, she's been prominent in defence. Tire. 
And there's Van Dyke for the rebound. They are doing everything right at the moment, the Silver Ferns. As they push it out to 14, they've scored the last five, and it's a bath. Well, at the moment, certainly, Plummer would be sitting on the bench thinking, what am I going to do now? Maybe Chatfield on Van Dyke is an option. Maybe the swing there. Ellis got caught up in the arms of Van Dyke, who frees herself up to back to the post. And a very strange shot in the end, but nonetheless effective. Seven in a row. Gerard. Prattley. They've had very little of the ball to work with and get some fluency and timing happening. Darby. There. Yes, Darby. You know you've done it. You did take her out. That's the way she plays. Again, she knows she's going to get the rebound, but she deliberately yeah. does that. She's got to be careful. Well, she doesn't have to got to be careful unless the umpires do something about it. No, but they just might. And sometimes in international you can get sent off. <laughs> sometimes, hardly ever. Stepping. Step call against the brain. Australia's got to score off this. Chatfield. 150 left in the second quarter. The quarter in which Australia's only scored five to New Zealand's 14 so far. Just creeping then in then on Monia Gerard. She just had her three but crawled in and the umpire saw it. Matt Lomberto, Chatfield, and back, Laura, Gerard, Laura Lomberto, McMahon, oh, Prattley, there's no communication that's effective there. It's certainly not, it looks like that McMahon, when she's getting the ball outside, she's not looking in, or if she balks it out to the side, she could flick it quickly into Prattley, but she, the option's not there, she's not looking at it. Well, the, the starting caps in the midcourt for Australia is uh, 46 to New Zealand's 130. Now it's even less than that. It's about 25 to 130. And that experience is showing. Slapped out of there by Chatfield. Prattley. McMahon. Uh, Darby absolutely causing it. And Matt Lombardo has done very well to Flora. straight under the post so she thought I've got to get into it a contact here stand out stand out good I know Darby's game <laughs> now certainly if you look at the replay she came out knew that McMahon was going to go the flick on was right there 31 17 in the la last couple of seconds of the second quarter and New Zealand well in control of this match to tire across the circle uh, Gerard tips it away and Australia held to just six goals in the... Away we go. Australia have got to be much smarter with the ball and just as aggressive to it as they trail 31-17. A couple of early penalties against uh, New Zealand. Anna Scarlett obviously in the game, so no real relief there. There's Liana De Bruyne, who's had a fantastic first half, gets a rest. The thing is, New Zealand are carrying five great defenders, so whoever they put on is pretty much going to do a great job for them. So Scarlett on for De Bruyne, and uh, Belinda Colling replaces Maria Tataya, who was 13 from 16. So I think uh, you would read into that that Ruth Aitken was, was more than satisfied with the performances of the players that have been replaced, but uh, just wanting to give Colling a run. This is her 89th international. How's that coming off the bench? Very experienced player, Colleen. In recent years, has been living over in England with her partner, so her husband. Playing well, a bit if, over there. If Australia can't arrest the trend of this match, they're looking yes. at another record Final defeat. Obstructing. It was 25 goals last October in New Zealand. And it's already 14. Yep. This is the time they've got to dig deep. They've got to make sure 
They steady and capitalise on any ball that they get. You don't want them the lead blowing out anymore. Linda Colling, a little bit of a flat shot, but through it goes. Laura Von Berto and Nat working together. Prattley. McMahon. Davu just guarding some territory as much as a player. And McMahon. Over Scarlett. And it's got to be a high shot to get over Anna. It does. Her arms are like go, go, gadget arms. They get up there. They, they're in your face. I was quite surprised Bones Scarlett didn't start, but obviously the brains have been in great form Bones in the National Bank Cup. Wilson, strong take from her, and then Colling. Oh, just rolled in there at the end. I think she willed that one in. A couple of Kiwi supporters with big smiles. Why wouldn't they? Great take by Laura Von Berno to stay inside the centre third. The ball must be touched in the centre third. On a centre pass. Goal defence. Scarlett is uh, penalised. Fratley. She's given away a few, so that's good for Australia. Retaken, moving. If you leave too early when you're put out of play, you'll get a, a re penalty if it doesn't go in. And Davu. And contact against Four McMahon, who didn't seem to have much to do with the challenge, but that's not how Maggie Duplessis saw it. And it's history quickly. Thrown away by New Zealand that time, and Scarlett it was. Even New Zealand new players create a few turnovers. Well, eh? I'm telling you now, when you put a new player on, two, two um, in turnovers each. That's what we always say. Gerard. Australia needs to cash in when they're this far behind on those precious turnovers. Contact. Penalty pass right there. Langman goes beside Matt Bomberto as that penalty's taken, and a little hesitant on the shot, but through it goes. I think McMahon was expecting Davu to, get, you know, reject that shot. Oh, she was hesitant. George. Is obstructing Colling. Is contact ring. Oh, there's a lot of physicality in there. Alice on Van Dyke. Yes. Slaps the ball into the court, and I think what saved her was that she regathered it. Such a fierce competitor, Liz Ellis. Hates being uh, shaded like this by the attack end. And that's what's yes. happening. <laughs> Irene Van Dyck, 20 from 21, her usual high standard. She shoots in international netball over 90%. Incredible. And today at 95 against the, uh, the next best team in the world. Australia just needs a little bit yes. of touch in attack. They're getting frustrated and they're forcing that ball. And sometimes it's this can be a little pass that your teammate doesn't expect. There was talk that Irene may not have a great series, that she hasn't been at her best in the uh, National Bank Cup. Yeah, I think, well, earlier she had clearly knocked the ball out of Irene's hands. And, and she was a little bit lucky to get as far as she did, Lizella. So. Well, certainly I agree with you, Steve. But what she's trying to do is frustrate these Kiwi bowlers. The midway contact. Take it up here, bring it up. And yes. up it comes to the middle of the centre third. Gerard, Chatfield. This is a, a common uh, Silver Ferns tactic when Australia's on the fast break. They don't mind giving up the penalties. Up and down the court just to slow Australia down. Exactly, they try and do that. Set up their zone defence, taking up space. Davu, too tall, too good. Oops, oh. Scarlet again. Just a little sloppy with that. It was there to be taken. Going third, up, up some more, up some more, up some more. There's the second one. Here, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gerard. Oops. Yeah, she got hit in the face by George. By George, she did. <laughs> yeah, that's better movement by the two goalers for Australia, Prattley and McMahon. Too right quick. There. Too quick for Scarlet. Bradley. Goal defense you see how long the arms are. They're much more aggressive defending the shot than Australia, who are more determined to keep them out of the circle. Well, it's a we, different style yeah, of defense. We and we tend to just, you know, lean or have a jump, but we're not all over Bones it, up, having a real down. red hot go, and that's Bones what they certainly up, do. Wilson. Shocking center. Yeah, and that Bomberto, yep. too close to Adine Wilson, who yep. gets on with the game as she always does. Great competitor. Uh, terrific athlete. Colling is found with a 
Very accurate ball, and under pressure, she gets it through. She did step back and use the sideline to her advantage to get a bit of room. Bradley, McMahon. Oh, it's crowded here. See, the New Zealanders are setting out the look. There's four of them there in the defensive unit, trying to make sure they keep the Australians close together and not being able to feed the ball through. McMahon looking for that 10th goal. Contact now, defender. And Scarlett's not having a happy introduction to the game. Okay, I thought she was going to be off for two passes. She had two fingers in the air. I thought she might be gone for two passes. And uh, Davu, great competitor that she is, has uh, caught a bit too much of the attention of Maggie Duplessis. And Steve, you thought that Maggie wasn't watching last quarter, did no, you? I'm not saying that. she wasn't watching. I'm just saying, do they have the courage to do something about it? Humberto. Will that... Uh, Temper the uh, enthusiasm, if you like, of Davu. That's against McMahon. Was she tried really desperately there to try and get that rebound, giving up a bit too much height. Only 68% for the girls. Australian shooting statistics. They've got to lift that. Especially against the 88%. Uh, oh, can't play it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> got to get up first, Bianca, the chat yeah. field. <laughs> Well, Norma Plummer uh, has got lots to work on between now and next Tuesday. Second test. It's always played hard, and you won't get the girls to criticise the way these matches are played. They think it's all right. As they all do it, I suppose. And we'll take them. The lead is 16, so it's been a steadier third quarter from Australia. Well, the centre passes have certainly got f through a lot more effectively. And Matt Bomberto picked out for that one. And uh, not 100% in agreement. Oh, great <laughs> kept in there by Laura Bomberto, putting it into Sherelle McMahon. Yeah, I don't know how she kept the feet in. If the umpire had uh, good eyes for it, Prattley. Oh, great shot. Good finish off there by Prattley. Now, look at this. McMahon, desperate, chases after it, but Laura gets there first and taps it in. Just had the toe on the line, so a reasonable call. And Irons missed. Good heavens. Well, you can have your toe on the line. It can't, just can't be over it. Now, Bromberto for Laura. Some teamwork coming there, perhaps. McMahon had to get up quickly <laughs> and takes the ball. <laughs> that was a manoeuvre. Well done, Sherelle McMahon, to regain your feet, get up and get back into play to get the ball. 14 the lead, as it was at half-time. So a better second quarter in that the lead has not grown any further. And the timeout is called uh, Monia Gerard in a little bit of trouble. Probably not a good time. It must be something that's happening to her because not strategic timeout because they got it. They've had a run on of two goals. The momentum was with them then. Mm. You know, the Bombertos were cutting and driving through there. It was much better play by the Australians. And then they've called a time. I was wondering whether De Bruyne might come back on because she's certainly warming up like she wants to and Scarlett could be benched. Well, certainly, the, you know, if Australia calls a time, certainly New Zealand can make a change. Now have a look. Fighting there for the ball. McMahon was down on the floor and she gets up and Scarlett, gets the ball. Yeah, Scarlett just thought she was out of play. She was on the floor, and but certainly, not for long. Yeah, Scarlett does move her head around a lot as a defender, so if you keep moving, she just gets a bit lost. So certainly that's something Australia's got to work on. And uh, Ruth Aitken has uh, left... She's, ah, left yeah. Scarlett out there, worried about Davu attracting the attention of the umpire. So Scarlett's still out there. Van de Bruyne has come back on. But Davu is the one who's gone. This circle for New Zealand is very, very tall at this point in time. Against two short Australian goalers. So Scarlett back to goalkeeper. De Bruyne comes back on at goal defence and Billy Davu is off. 
Probably a good move by um, the coach Aitken for New Zealand to take Darbu off. She was getting frustrated. See, that uh, little timeout by Australia might have just been what Scarlett wanted as she takes an important ball to Brain. Colling. Great high ball up to Van Dyke. And she <laughs> makes sure that uh, she got that penalty. Uh, I think her penalty was there, but she made sure that Chris Campbell didn't miss it. Well, certainly there is body on body when Irene does hold for that space behind. She's so strong. Colling. George, under pressure from Gerard. I thought she was bound to give up the contact, Gerard, but uh, it was clean. Now Bomberto to Laura. George right there. Placed in for McMahon. De Brain defending, McMahon accurate. I did like that passive play from Australia. The Bombertos, I've wanted to see this combination on the court for a long time. Held ball on that set of pass. Fantastic pressure by the Silver Ferns across the middle. There, there always is, particularly in the last three or four years. There's just not a weak link in the whole chain of their defence. From shooter down, they put the pressure on. Ellis. <laughs> Ellis just pushed the ball into Collins. She needs to be a bit careful herself. Just to create a bit of space, I suppose. Prattley. Prattley five from seven since replacing Cox. Is this six from eight? It is. Great movement from the Australians then. They were patient. They didn't put the high ball up. They bounced it around. George. Sucking wind. Yes. Van Dyke with her 23rd from 25. Laura Lomberto drives after giving the ball to Prattley. Prattley and working well with uh, Nat Lomberto. Well, Prattley's looking a little bit more confident out there. She's flicking the ball back out to her wings. She's getting set up nicely. And 39-26, Australia is actually winning the quarter now. So it's uh, gradually improving, but uh, certainly they gave the Silver Ferns a huge start. Oh. Well, she was out of court. Lizzie Ellis put the pressure on. I don't please just settle down, please. All right. I don't think either player was to blame there. They're not getting up like uh, it was anybody's fault. They just got tangled up. <laughs> they got tangled up. They did with a big fall. Bradley anchors the left foot on the baseline. Scarlett. Too close. She's out of play. Bradley puts it through. Good work, Bradley. Now you have a look here. Yes, Irene Van Dyke out of court. Lizzie Ellis grabs the ball, throws it in. And they all run down. They got caught in the quads. Again. She's feeling, look, you can tell in her whole motion, the way she's playing. Well done, Susan Prattley. Well, Langman, uh, that was a 50-50 ball, and she just got there. Colling back to Wilson. Australia now playing, double-teaming Irene Van Dyke, and it seems to be working. Oh, McMahon. Oh, that could have gone to the Silver Fern. She stopped on a run. Laura Bomberto, Prattley playing with great confidence. Oh, nearly a replay. Can she finish this one off? Can she get a shot away? Yes, she can. She even stepped into the tall defenders, but gradually got it away at the end, right on the last second. Australia got it down to 10. Pushed out by De Bruyne. If they can get it down to single figures here, it's game on in the last quarter. And they look shot to bits when they were trailing by 16. Chatfield, Gerard. Must convert this ball. 
It's a really important one to give them that momentum for the last quarter. McMahon, 10 seconds left. Oh, take it quickly. Five. Put the shot up. And yes. it. No time left in the quarter. The lead is nine, and there oh, is three quarter time. Did they give up the center? I don't think they did. They pushed home to both Ellis and Chatfield. Here we go, 15 minutes left in the first test between Australia and New Zealand. Second coming up in Sydney on Tuesday night at the Superdome. Contact against the brain and she disputes the decision and only gets a smile from Chris Campbell. As an umpire, he's absolutely unflappable. I quite like him. He's a great umpire. I've seen him over in Jamaica. That's where he's from. And he was at the Commonwealth Games. He's just a good umpire. And he'll... Six goals in a row for Australia. Last five of the third quarter and first of the last. Colin. You can see Irene calling for it. Arm up. She said, I'm on the hole. Give it to me. And the chant goes up around the Superdome. Let's go, Aussie, as Colling puts one short. And Australia gets possession. Now, Colling, she's not the big shooter like Tatari. So, you know, Australia, if they put the pressure on, make her shoot, get back on Irene, we could get some turnovers. Bradley makes a good lead. Gerard drives up. They've all got to support. There's so much pressure over these passes. There better be players available as they'll get snuffed out. Chatfield, Gerard, got to be patient. This is the way, McMahon. Laura Bomberto and McMahon. And we hear that Cheryl McMahon has enjoyed working with Laura up front. She has, and I spoke to her this week, and she said, I really wish I'd get out there and play with the Bonnies. And yeah. De Bruyne out. I think they're both out. And shooting practice for Cheryl. It's back to seven. Nat Bomberto to Laura. Prattley, there are the quarter by quarter scores by five at quarter time, New Zealand. Then by 14, and they increased that early in the third quarter. Then a big turnaround when Wadabu was taken off. Great tip for New Zealand to get them going forward. This would be a steadier. And the third quarter that went to Australia, 14-8. Australia got to keep creating the turnovers. Yeah, Nat Bomberto penalised. To Mapara George, to Colling. Yeah, I think Gerard caught offside. Certainly was. What the Australian defenders are trying to do here is double team Van Dyke. They want to make Colling shoot. That's what the direction is. Well, yeah, good move from Irene Van Dyke. Steadier for them. And it's taken the best part of three minutes for them to score their first goal of the last quarter. Billy Dabu, just a spectator since about halfway through the third quarter. Yeah, it was what she's calling her for is circling. OK, she's going over the body of Van Dyke. Unlucky because I thought she had good position, but the ball feet coming in was a bit too good. Van Dyke, her 25th. And Ruth Aitken and her assistant Lee Gibbs, who we heard a little bit from in that third quarter uh, break. Very calm voices. Lee Gibbs, a former coach of the team, now the assistant. He's the coach of the Silver Ferns at the 95 World Championships. Great take by McMahon. Now Scarlett has to pull back, and she didn't, so she's out of play. Such a competitor, McMahon. You can tell she grits her teeth and thinks, oh, I'm going to get back in this match and I'm going to sink the ball. Australia's made a good run, but it's uh, starting to go goal for goal now. Prattley on 85%. She just about might have earned herself a start in the second test. Catherine Cox having struggled to seven from nine. Four penalties and a couple of turnovers. And she was replaced after the first quarter. New Zealand have steadied it. Nine goals. Prattley. Uh, Van Dyke on 93, Colin 57. That's why Australia wants Colin to be forced into shooting. You know, you know just, obviously Ruth Aitken not panicking, not replacing 
Colling with Tataya. You just get the feeling that if uh, she put Tataya back on, it'll be game over. Well, Tataya was playing so beautifully and shooting so accurately, and they've made the switch. Maybe they're just testing Colling, seeing how she's going and whether she's up to it. Van Dyke got a little knock to the face in that challenge from Ellis. Ten minutes to go. This centre pass, the Australian attackers overloading the centre. Laura Von Berto won't seem to work efficiently Bond this far. Nat Von Berto, what a physical game it is. Very nearly the three seconds. And Prattley gets clipped twice. Bit of a shield set up by McMahon. Out it comes. Well kept in by the Scarlet. Long arms pulled the ball in before it went out of court. Oh, Chatler, Chatler, uh, huge um, challenge. Unfortunately, because she had it, it was after she got the tip, she pushed back in with her elbow. Oh, uh, no quarter asked. Wilson, George, Colling. She mightn't be as good as Van Dyke, but she doesn't miss those. Well, here we go. Out, Chatfield comes in, bangs in the Colling. It was actually after she landed. Colling is looking at, to get in to Van Dyke, and they do that now. Longer range shot for Irene, but uh, now they've got it by 11. Laura Von Berto to Nat. Do you like them as a combination? Well, I certainly do, because you know what's happening? They're actually getting it on top of the circle. It's just now got to make sure that they connect with the goalers. They didn't that time. Wilson. Oh, and there's, a, there's an injury and it looks a bad one for Colling. And she collided with Chatfield and straight away she grabbed the knee. She said then to the physio, I've twisted my knee. Oh, as long as she hasn't torn anything. Well, here we go. Tough stuff by Chatfield. She came over as Colling fell. She connected with the legs. They both end up on the ground. Just a trip over the legs there. Connected, so all, all the legs there just winding in. Well, that opportunity to put the tyre on may have come in uh, unfortunate circumstance. Ruth Aiken saying, are you going to be all right? Do you want to come off? Colling on uh, five from eight. Well, I think she was smiling, saying, I think I'm OK. She's up on her feet now. She's uh, up Here and about. Here we go. You can see Chatfield coming over. As Colling fell, she flicked her leg up in the air. They both fell over. It probably looked a little bit worse than it was, Steve. OK, well, she exchanges a greeting with Chatfield, and they seem OK about it all. Van Dyke, oh. Construction. And Ellis saying, well, pleading her case with Duplessis. <laughs> she goes, she did step Both in. Be taken, you're moving before the ball is there. Both out of you. And discussing a point of law, Liz Ellis, a former lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> well, a law graduate, didn't practice it for too long. Got too busy with netball. Now, yeah, four unanswered goals from the Silver Ferns has uh, just about put them uh, safely in control of this first test, I think. And certainly had the pressure applied to them late in the third quarter. You are holding her. On you are holding her, <laughs> says Maggie Duplessis. She's very stern and she's telling Liz Ellis what she's doing. Can't ask for fairer than that. Colling has fully recovered from the knee twinge. Five in a row, Prattley. So the run of Australia has uh, expired, it would seem. McMahon, I've got to hasten quickly. Obstruction drawn out of uh, the challenge from Scarlett. De Brain, post on the move. <laughs> Trying to put them off, not only with their defence, but like banging the pole as well. I don't think it was intentional. Gerard uh, and Wilson collide. Wilson came off the worst, quickly to her feet, and here she is again. Bring defence contact. And Gerard is really trying to sort out a Dean Wilson. 
Well, she certainly is. She's on there, but she's giving away a few penalties, but it's a good, tough contest between them both. And Nadine, you know what? She doesn't like it. She doesn't like it when, you know, there's a physicality to her opponent. And she doesn't uh, give too many signs that she doesn't oh, like it. Her face, you can tell it in her face. Gerard doesn't mind the physical contest. No, Bring it on, she it. says. <laughs> Nat Bomberto, Prattley, soccer. looking to give off somewhere. Uh, I didn't see the percentage in that one. Well, lifting it up high isn't the percentage Ooh. play against these tall defenders from the Silver Ferns. Who's got it? Contact goes shooter. Yep. Contact McMahon. Six minutes to go. Kiwi's back out by 12. So they're certainly winning this quarter. In fact, winning it by four. So just the third quarter, Australia are able to win. Obstruction, wing attack. Colling, Wilson, <laughs> Gerard, having a great go with uh, the New Zealand skipper, Van Dyke. Well, Ruth Aitken has got a terrific record now Ball with New Zealand. Tell me the other day, it's uh, pretty hard for her to walk down the street or do her shopping. She's quite uh, a celebrity back home. Uh, the Silver Ferns uh, up there in profile with the All Blacks. Well, they are. They're, you know, they're on everything. I go over there. They're Ball all on the billboards. They're on TV commercials. It's huge. And uh, she was coach of the year uh, when they won the World Championships a couple That's of years back. No. Uh, good case for uh, advantage there. And Australia working it down the court quickly. Chatfield. Now Bomberto. Laura. Bomberto, Chatfield. Better Finally. patience from Australia that time. Man 19 from 25. Norma Plummer has seen some promising things out there and has maybe learned something about her combinations. Contact I think a lot of people have been waiting to see the Vombertos play together Bonus for Australia. Team. And there's a bit to, to be enthusiastic about. Well, there certainly is. This quarter in particular, it hasn't really been them that have yep. thrown the ball away. It's been either McMahon or Prattley. So in the attacking, it's a positive sign that the, the wing attack and centre are working together really well. I don't think... Oh, um, good work, Liz Ellis. Great positioning there on Van Dyke. I don't think Sherelle McMahon will like the look of the stats at the end of the game when she sees 10 turnovers against her name. It's uh, far more than any other player. Seven against Wilson. So far more. Three is, is significant. Well, when you go out there, you aim to not throw anything away. So, you know, to throw 10, I know you should be disappointed with that one. One is broken. Bring the fence obstruction, then also pass. It's great quick hands by New Zealand. They're flicking it around, finding good position to shoot from. Wait for it. Calling. Over Australia, 87 penalties. Some 30 more than the Kiwis. That, that is, is a huge. lot. Well, obviously went out there to play it uh, in a determined, uh, even aggressive manner. Contact centre. Kamapara George. Yes. Given up just 10 penalties and she's one of the more feisty players in world netball. She's played a controlled game. Oh, McMahon. Would have uh, liked to retake that one. Wilson. It's just, yeah, contact they're calling there, the umpire on Gerard. On the hand of Wilson. Colling. They don't want this to actually blow out. They've got to make sure that they do score off their centre, get a few turnovers here. 51-37. Very much back in control, New Zealand. Van Dyke. And it's a carry, yeah. <laughs> Step from Irene Van Dyke. Whoops. <laughs> Van Dyke helps Gerard up. She'll do it with a smile, she always does. Contact, wing defence, what's wrong? Well, Irene denies it, but Down. she's being paid an extraordinary Down, come, amount of money per game over yes. New Zealand in their national Ball league. Is obstructing. And uh, higher paid than a lot of high profile footballers. 
Some say in advance of $20,000 a game. If they only play about eight or nine in their National League, depending on whether they make uh, the finals or not. Only seven if they don't. Prattley. Short. Scarlet. They're Lehman. dominating the rebounds, New Zealand. Ellis came out and had to pull out of the challenge against uh, the Kiwi skipper, Odine Wilson. She might uh, show her frustration, but I think she also shows a lot of self-control, Odine Wilson. She's had a pretty torrid time from Monia Gerard, not always legally. She, she is. She's actually, you can see, she grimaces on her face, but she's controlled it well and she gets on with it. Holling creates a bit of space for herself. The feed finds her. And 14 the lead again. Breaking three pass. Breaking. She came over, then went back. They've called it for breaking. Causing contact, penalty pass. Holling, causing. Take it. Out of play, out of play. Varner's contact. Moving goal attack. 150 penalties in the match. I don't even think you could say the umpires have had a bad game. It's so hard to the players go at it in these Australian New Zealand internationals. But because it is physical, it is good that they do pull up the ones that they have. So they have controlled it well. McMahon. So quick to make the, the second defensive effort, Scarlett. Yes, but are. often not uh, legally. She's not letting a lot of space in between. When she has a go at the second one. Only eight goals in the last quarter from Australia when they ne really needed to run on. 14 in the third. Couldn't keep it going. A re-energised New Zealand came out. McMahon. Scarlett came out looking for the ball. Underarm. Shot the pass. The brain. Contact on the arm of McMahon. We're trying to push inside. Sort of. <laughs> yes. Yes. Stumbling no. away around the circle to get into a position out of play. And that is the end of play. New Zealand emphatically make it 9 from 11 with a 52 to 40 win.